Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by Chagas Organic Specialist, Elaine Levy, to get an insight into the new organic scheme opening in October, the key steps to consider in conversion and the upcoming National Organic Open Day. Elaine, you're very welcome. Currently, how many farmers are in organics and where do you see that going in the future? This year, Catherine, in the region of 380 farmers uh, applied to join the organic farming scheme. And I suppose it brings up to the region of 2000, over, just over 2,200 approximately farmers organically in Ireland in total. And the estimate would be about 70% of those would be livestock farmers. And recent figures have showed that there's a, in the region of 11,000 animals slaughtered on an annual basis. Where we're at in the mo- in, at the moment, overview in Ireland, we're currently that uh, about two and a half percent farmed farming organically. The government, the present government target is to bring that to seven and a half percent. So that's a three times what's there at the moment. So they're looking at bringing that. The area of land is in a region of one hundred ten thousand hectares. So it's to bring that up to three hundred and thirty thousand hectares is the the target for government. And there are changes to the new scheme opening in October. What can farmers expect? Yes, that's right, Catherine. The new organic farming scheme is opening up in October. It's part of the 256 million package that it is for funding for organic farming going forward for organic farming scheme. And uh, I suppose the first good news is that the payments have been increased from the last round of the scheme. So you're talking about a, a dry stock farmer up to between one and 70 hectares. When you enter the organic farming scheme, it's just to remember that if your land undergoes an inconversion for two years, and in those two years, your payment is that bit higher. So you're getting um, in 300 euros per hectare up to 70 hectares in year one and two. After two years, your land is fully uh, organic and the payment then will be reduced for a dry stock farmer up to 70 hectares, 250 euro per hectare for re- year three, four and five. So it's an area based payment. But if anybody with greater than 70 hectares, there is a payment of 60 euros in year one and two and then uh, 30 euros for year three, four and five. I, on top of that, this time, Catherine, there is what's called a participation payment. And in the first year, uh, that would be 2,000 euro. And then from year two, three, four and five, that'd be 1,400 euros per year. I suppose maybe just explain what the reasoning behind this is, that every organic farmer will have to register with an organic certification uh, body and they are inspected and regulated them on an annual basis and they will be inspected by them and they also have to pay a licensing fee towards um, towards that every year. So that payment would help that. Also, all organic farmers that enter the scheme have to complete a 25-hour organic farming principles course. There's a cost involved in that. And any training or any traveling the farm walks or anything like that will all be covered in, in, in this participation payment. As well again another just change as well, Catherine, is the change in the the, the stocking rate and uh, the stocking rate and I and I stress this is a minimum stocking rate that a farmer needs to have to to I suppose activate the payment would be a point uh, one of a livestock unit per hectare. So it's a yield per hectare uh, similar to what the ANC payment is. So that's, they're the main changes, three main changes to, to the scheme, Catherine. All very welcome changes, Aline. And I suppose for farmers looking to go organic from a conventional system, what are the first steps really that they need to consider to convert? So in, in relation to what changes a farmer would have to make, Catherine, thinking about conversion, I suppose the first thing is looking out in the farmyard. The whole area of animal housing is slightly different. In an organic system, there are specific space requirements uh, uh, outlined for each type of animal, and all animals have to have uh, access to a lie-back bedded area. It must be a solid lie-back bedded area, uh, you, uh, and this this is, has to be 50% of the area required by, by the animal. So that's, that would be something farmers would have to look at as regards animal housing. Then looking out at the grassland management and stock numbers, again, a lot of farmers that we talk to, it, they may say they're newly organic, they might be going out with a lot of fertilizer, but when you're in organics, you can't use any of that artificial fertilizer. So again, it's to try and uh, you know look at producing grassland and 
be it in on the field or in the in the seed silage time. So that is something to look at. And also then you're stocking with some farmers will have to maybe look at reducing their stocking rate and get into the system and then hopefully move on with, with that. So there will be a couple of key areas to look at from the dry stock situation. And for farmers interested in joining in October, what are the expected opening dates or deadline dates that they need to be aware of? Yeah, to apply, Catherine, what you have to do, the, the uh, opening date is the first, the opening date of the scheme is expected in the first week in October, is expected to uh, open for an eight-week window. In that time, if a farmer decides, yes, I want to convert my farm, what they have to do is they first have to make an application, uh, contact one of the certification bodies. There's two certification bodies in Ireland, the Irish Organic Association and Organic Trust. So they contact one of them, get an application pack from them, make an application to the certification body. Once they do that, then the certification body, there's a cross-reporting mechanism with the organic unit of the Department of Agriculture. They'll be registered with, with the department straight away. And then they have to go online onto agfood.ie portal and apply for the organic farming scheme. So those are it's a two-step approach. Certification body first and then onto agfood.ie. That has to be done in that eight-week window. I mentioned earlier about the 25 organic farming principles courses. You don't have to have that done by the closing date. The department in their terms and conditions will allow a certain time frame after the closing date to to complete this course. And then also then when you're doing your, well, it's not going to be BPS next year, it's the BIS scheme and you're making your application next year on that, you will have to declare your farming organically and tick the box for that if your plots are in conversion. So that's the, the process for application, Catherine. That's great, Elaine. And the Chagas Organic Team, in conjunction with the Department of Agriculture and Borbia, have organised a National Organic Beef Open Day, which has taken place in September on the 28th in County Tipperary. Can you tell me more about it? Yes, Catherine. This is, as you correctly said, it's taking place on the 28th of September. It's taking place on the farm of John Purcell in Ross Gold and just outside Cashel in Indian County. Tipperary and it's an organic beef 22 is the way we're signposting it but it's for everybody that's considering organic any farmer considering organic uh, uh, an organic system so on that day maybe just to give a very brief overview of it we'll be looking at areas I've just mentioned there in relation to grassland management so we're going to be looking at the whole area of the role of white clover red clover and we'll have our colleagues talking about establishing maintaining clover uh, grassland management we'll be looking at animal housing We'll be looking at animal health. We'll be looking at soil fertility and uh, soil nutrients. All the certification bodies will be there. The department will be there. It's a joint, as you said, a farm walk between ourselves, the department and board B. So there'll be a number of um, of people there from from those uh, areas. And also it will finish then. We have an organic forum at the end of it where we will have people from Chagas Board B and department and processes to talk about what we've just discussed here in relation to organic production being increased in Ireland, what what knock-on that will have for markets, etc. going forward. It'd be really important, Elaine, for farmers that are interested in conversion or even considering it in the coming years that they'd attend this open day. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, definitely it would be. And even uh, definitely anybody considering because all aspects and it's, it's all there to be seen on the day. So from the ground right up uh, is covered. The organic programme is being extended in Chagas in the coming weeks, Celine. What does that entail? What we're getting on board is we are going to have six regional organic advisors within our advisory service. So within the regional units, that's the way the Chagas Advisory Service is divided up. We're going to have six full-time uh, organic uh, advisors coming on board and they will be supported by myself and we have three organic specialists uh, presently. We've just uh, uh, Martin Bork, who has just recently joined us, Martin is coming in and he's coming in with a cropping tillage expertise coming on board. So we have three specialists and we'll be hoping in the short term to get a fourth specialist looking at the area of horticulture. So we're going up from a team of two to a, a t- to a team of 10. So, yes, definitely a lot more resources and help out there for anybody, any Chagas client or non-client thinking about organics. That's great to hear, Elaine. Thanks very much. OK, Catherine, thank you for your time. That's all for this week's episode and my thanks to Elaine for joining me on the show. We are currently running a survey to find out how the Beef Edge podcast is of use to you. 
And if you click on the link in the podcast notes to complete the survey, it will help us improve the show. In the meantime, you can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie, or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.